Good afternoon and welcome to Cooking with Food Allergies. My name is Amanda LaFew and I am the co-founder and co-executive director of the FPIES Foundation. I started cooking for my daughters about six years ago when my first daughter was diagnosed with FPIES and we are still coming up with new recipes every day to better suit their lists of safe foods. So today I'd like to share with you a few tips to either get you started or to help you continue on your journeys to an FPIES friendly kitchen. Food allergies affect approximately 1 in 13 young children, according to FAIR. There are medical studies in existence, ongoing and already published, that outline typical symptoms, foods that are commonly involved, and even more in-depth information. But what about day-to-day -day life? What aspects are involved in helping our babies and children to have normalcy in all places in the kitchen? Welcome to the FPIES Foundation's Cooking with Food Allergies Bootcamp. By the end of this session, you will be better able to navigate the various hurdles involved in allergy-friendly cooking. Today, we're going to explore the equipment that you might need, tips for providing variety despite limitations, tips for safer cooking practices, how to adapt and create recipes for allergy-friendly cooking and baking, and some interactive activities that you can complete independently or with a friend designed to help you practice the skills that you learned today. And for those of you watching this presentation at its release on Global FPIES Day, there will also be a surprise for you at the end, so you do not want to miss out. The basics. There are varying degrees of sensitivity to a child's specific allergens. Some children may not have any issues with foods prepared on shared family cookware, whereas some children may require their own special cookware for the best avoidance of reactions. Some children can even react to airborne food proteins, which adds a completely other dimension to safe allergy cooking. Getting to know your child's degree of sensitivity can be very helpful in navigating your family's food preparation practices. A knowledgeable allergist familiar with FPIES and also with your child can really help you to best determine how sensitive your child may be to his or her allergens based on information gathered from testing and or your child's reaction history. If your child can safely share the family's cookware, great. You might find it helpful to add a few pieces to your collection, though, to help with dressing up the same ingredient list in different ways. For instance, a pancake recipe can often be used to make waffles. There are some shaped waffle irons on the market that might be fun to use just to jazz up your little one's breakfast options. Cookie cutters and fun shapes can be used for shaping homemade crackers, cookies, breads, and even pancakes. Special pans and molds can be found at cheap prices at the end of the season. So when you're looking for a cheap spring-themed pan, for instance, see if you can find a good deal on one in early summer and so on and so forth. Now, your child may require his or her own cooking equipment for safety reasons. Again, you're going to want to have a discussion with your child's allergist to best determine what is the best fit for your child. Now this can feel like an overwhelming prospect, mainly for budget, cleaning, and storage reasons. Another concern I remember feeling was wondering how in the world I would keep everything separated from the family's cookware. So here are some tips that might help you to navigate this prospect. Number one, purchase a separate color of cooking utensils, such as large cooking spoons, spatulas, measuring cups, and so forth, for your child, and another color for your family. Minimize what you buy. Your child does not need a complete set of pots and pans for his or her individual baking. Some equipment that you will likely need may include a skillet or a frying pan, a couple medium saucepans, a large brownie pan, which you could use as a cookie sheet or a casserole dish, and a few shaped utensils like spatula, large spoons, and so forth. Another point to consider is making it fun. Fine shaped muffin tins, a large collection of cookie cutters, seasonal themed cake or brownie pans, and even small kitchen appliances that will add a touch of variety to your child's diet. And as for storage, it can be helpful to designate a special cabinet or shelf in the kitchen for storing your child's cooking equipment. Label is necessary depending on your family's needs. And for cleanup, 
some families feel comfortable buying a separate sponge for washing the individualized cookware in an effort to prevent contamination. For children who do have airborne reactions to their allergens in the event of an IgE allergy, the family may wish to discuss removing the allergens completely from their houses so as to minimize the potential for exposure. Now, other circumstances may exist that cause a family to feel more comfortable removing the allergens completely from the family home. And of course, only the family and the child's doctor can really best decide if and when the scenario may be necessary. Making homemade baby food for your infant can add a few pieces of extra equipment to your collection. Some parents enjoy the appliances that are designed to address every step in the food making process the cleaning, the peeling, the cooking, the pureeing, whereas other parents find a blender or food processor, in addition to the cooking equipment, to be sufficient. Essentially, you will need equipment to cover these three areas. You will need equipment for cooking. Now, this can include some or all of the following, such as knives, peelers, cutting boards, a saucepan, cookie sheets, or a colander. You will also need equipment for pureeing, mashing, and preparation of the actual food. Some families enjoy a manual food grinder, a pastry blender, a blender, a food processor, or a special food baby food making appliance. For storage, you might want to consider small Tupperware, freezer bags, ice cube trays, you can find these covered or uncovered, labels, and permanent markers. Some families find it helpful to buy allergy-themed cookbooks, such as those including only vegan recipes, recipes eliminating the top eight allergens, gluten-free recipes, and so on. If you check out our website, you will find a list of cookbooks that you might want to explore. Variety, the spice of life, but in my house, without the spices. When your child is already faced with limitations due to food allergies, finding a varied diet can be rather challenging. Once you throw in pickiness appropriate for age and stage, what's a parent to do? Let's get creative. Finding variety within the same old ingredients. Some of our children may subsist on very short ingredient lists due to multiple food allergies. Parents may find that the best way to handle this challenge is by learning about the food that is available to you. Essentially, what each food can do. Can you bake it, fry it, puree it, or shape it? What other ingredients does it work with and complement both nutritionally and functionally? For instance, if your child is able to eat corn products, he or she may not be just limited to kernel or creamed corn. Cornmeal, plain grits, Flour, masa, cornstarch, corn pasta, some corn cereals, and so on are all available corn products made with just corn. With baking ingredients like masa or cornmeal, you have the base for many recipes, including but not limited to pancakes, tortillas, waffles, muffins, and so on. Some foods, such as nuts and seeds, are also available in milks, flours, butters, and of course in their natural form for a variety of texture and taste experiences. By researching the various forms of a single ingredient food and what it can present in, a single safe food can pack a lot more punch than initially thought. A few examples of foods that are commonly available in a variety of forms, even commercially, are quinoa, hemp, coconut, flax or sunflower seeds, and even apples and other fresh fruits. Different presentations. Sometimes the tools and equipment you use to prepare your child's foods can actually make the same things more interesting. Here are some examples. If you can make a meatloaf, you will likely be able to make meatballs and or burgers. If you have a safe pancake recipe, you can often use it to make great waffles and a waffle iron. Muffin cup meals are another wonderful way to add variety to your child's diet. There are quite a few articles about this online and it's really an interesting concept. So what you do is you start with a small muffin tin with about six compartments in it. You fill each compartment with a different safe food for your little one, or a version of a safe food if your child does not have six safe foods yet. He or she is then given a variety of meal choices and it's presented in a fun format. 
You could fill the cups with any variation of items. Yogurt, fruit, veggie sticks, save crackers, cereal. You can even create themed meals based on colors or holidays. Another way to add variety is through cookie cutters. They can be used to make fun-shaped biscuits, sandwiches, tortillas, pancakes, or even other flatbreads. Oftentimes, it can be really frustrating baking or cooking for your food allergic child, whether he or she is avoiding one ingredient or 10. It can be tricky finding recipes that you can follow word for word and still have the outcome be tasty and safe for your child. Discovering how to alter existing recipes can open up so many doors for adding variety and even more nutritionally sound options for your child's diet. So here are some basic tips for altering recipes. First, consider exactly what you are avoiding. If you are avoiding eggs, for instance, don't choose a recipe that is heavily reliant on eggs. You will want to choose a recipe that either avoids eggs completely or uses a relatively small amount of eggs. Your substitutions are more likely to be successful if the substitution isn't the pivotal ingredient in the recipe. Number two, consider the function of the ingredients that you are substituting out. Again, if you're substituting for eggs, for instance, what purpose do the eggs serve in the recipe? Do the eggs function as a leavening agent? Do they help make the dough rise? Are they a binder? Do they help hold things together? Or do they do both jobs? The function of the original ingredient is going to help you to determine what substitute will be best suited to the recipe itself. Next, you want to consider the balance between liquid and dry ingredients. Does the altered recipe have a greater amount of liquid ingredients than the original? Do you need to alter the dry ingredients or the wet ingredients to adjust the balance of the recipe to be more similar to the original? Once you become more familiar with the ingredients available to you, you will understand the functionality of these foods and how flexible each is in terms of baking and cooking. Starting with basic cookie, muffin, and even cake recipes can be a really great way to learn about how each recipe works. When you're first starting out, it might be helpful to first prepare the recipe as written, and then have someone who the ingredients are safe for taste this recipe. Then you make a second version with your substitutions and compare the results. The taste and or texture may vary slightly, but the overall idea of the type of food, a cookie, a muffin, and so on, should remain the same. If it varies significantly, you want to make notes as to what the variances are and then try a new round of substitutes or a new recipe entirely. When creating new recipes, a quote by Julia Child is a really good one to follow. The only real stumbling block is the fear of failure. In cooking, you've got to have a what the heck attitude. Once you have been successfully altering recipes and have learned the function of your available ingredients, as well as how basic recipes act, like formulas for cookies, cakes, breads, and so on, you will really have a wonderful base to start building new recipes. Some things to keep in mind when you're creating something new. Allow yourself time. Time to make the recipe a few times before serving. Don't create a birthday cake recipe the night before the big day. Secondly, allow enough ingredients for at least two batches of the same recipe. Or my favorite way is to make two half batches because as we all know, allergy friendly ingredients can sometimes be extremely expensive. You also want to estimate cooking times erring on the side of caution. You want to really check that oven frequently and make sure your food is not burning. Also estimate cooking temperatures erring on the side of caution. But you do also have to make sure that certain foods such as meats, poultry, and fish are cooked at appropriate temperatures for safety. And for this, you might want to con consult some really basic cookbooks to give you an idea of what those temperatures may be. Many recipes that eliminate or substitute out the more common in ingredients tend to fare better when they are baked at low temperatures for a bit longer time frame. This of course can vary on your recipe, so keep this in mind. Next, you always want to write down your measurements as you go. If your recipe turns out well, you are really going to want to be able to replicate it. And finally, don't beat yourself up. 
some attempts are going to be a huge success, and some attempts will be less than edible. You are doing an amazing thing for your family and for your child by working so hard to expand his or her options. Pat yourself on the back and take a break if you need to. My personal favorite cooking tool is a cooking journal. This can be a really helpful tool when creating or altering recipes because it allows you to track your successes and your not so successful attempts. It also can be helpful to not only record the ingredients in the preparation process, but also why you feel the recipe was a success or not. Recipe alteration and creation is a learning process and recording the steps you take along the way can really help you to be better prepared for your next baking endeavor. If you want to learn more about the functionality of ingredients and formulas and recipes, books like Cook's Illustrated Magazines and their textbooks can be really helpful guides in explaining the whys of cooking. And for additional resources related to cooking with F-Pies, as well as food allergies in general, please check out the links here for more details. I really hope you have all enjoyed our presentation today and are now ready to jump into your next kitchen creation. Just as a recap, we have today explored the equipment you may need to get started, tips for providing variety, despite limits, tips for safer cooking practices, and tips for transforming recipes. Before we go, I just want to remind you to check out our new custom recipe creations worksheet, which is a template designed to help you create new recipes in addition to the bounty of resources found on the cooking and recipes page at the fpiesfoundation.org. And as always, please do not hesitate to contact us for any and all questions related to FPIs, cooking and otherwise. Here at the FPIES Foundation, we hope to make day-to-day -day life with FPIES a little bit easier remember that you are never alone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Be sure to check out the interactive activities that follow and the bonus surprise at the end. Happy Global Day to all.